Okay, so welcome to section 6.6. .6. This is the last section in unit 6. And we're going to talk about the general form of the equation. So at this point, we've learned three different forms uh, of a linear equation. They all represent the same thing. They're just written in different ways. So uh, each form is just a rearrangement of one another. So let's review the first three that we've learned. And then in this lesson, we're actually going to add a fourth. So we're going to add the general form. So let's start with y equals mx plus b, the one you've probably seen most often. Uh, this is the slope-intercept form. We call it that because it's a form that represents the slope being m and the y-intercept being b. So this is a form that we use when we're given the slope and the y-intercept. Then we have this form here. This is the slope-point form. Called that because it's a form that uses the slope, as in the variable m, and it gives us one coordinate in the form x1, y1. So it would be written like so. Useful when we're given the slope and any point on the line. And finally, we have the coordinate form. The coordinate form is useful when we're only given coordinates that lie on the line. In this case, the coordinates will be x1, y1, and x2 and y2, and we plug those in here. And remember, this part here is really just representing the equation for a slope. So, if that wasn't confusing enough, we're going to give you a fourth form to remember. Now, most of these are going to be on your provincial package, so you don't have to memorize them, but you do have to bring your provincial package for the test. Uh, and in this fourth form, we're going to use it uh, in this form. So, ax plus by plus c is equal to zero. So, x, y are our, our points on the line, and a, b, and c are going to be numerical values. Now, a is always a whole number, meaning it's not a fraction nor a decimal, and it can never be a negative number. It's always positive. Where B and C, while they're never going to be fractions or decimals, they are going to be integers, which means they can be either positive or negative. And in this form, we always, always have zero on the right side of the equation. So here's an example of an equation of a line in that form. Uh, and just to show you that this is really just the same equation that we've seen before, just rearranged, I'm going to throw this back into the form y equals mx plus b uh, with a little bit of algebraic manipulation. So I'll start by just subtracting 3x from both sides. And that's going to give me negative 4y plus 7 is equal to negative 3x because these cancel out. Then I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. That'll leave me with negative 4y is equal to negative 3x minus 7. And finally, I want to isolate it y, so I'm going to divide negative 4 from both sides. And that'll cancel those out, leaving me with y is equal to... And remember, when I'm dividing multiple terms by one number, I can do that, but I have to make sure that I divide negative 4 from both terms. So... Uh, negative 3 divided by negative 4. I'll keep that as a fraction, but that turns into a positive 3 fourths times x. And same thing here, negative 7 divided by negative 4. I'll keep that as a fraction, but that turns into negative or positive 7 over 4. And there you go, y equals mx plus b. So exactly the same equation that we've seen before. All four versions of those equations are the same equation, just written differently uh, to be able to perform different things and manipulate graphs in different ways. Moving on, now they want us to take these equations that we've seen before. This is the form, this is the slope-intercept form, the y is equal to mx plus b. And this is the slope-point form, so this is y minus y1 is equal to m times x plus x1. And they want us to use algebra to turn these into the general form. So the form ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. And when we do that, I like to use four steps. Uh, the first step is to simplify the equation, if you can. So simplify it as best as possible, and then you're going to get rid of the fractions. And let's do that first. And at this point, it is good to have strong algebra skills. As I've said before in the course, if your algebra skills aren't strong, um, if you're not real confident with them, do seek some help. Come and see me during tutorial time or you can go upstairs and see the ladies at the clinic. 
Uh, they can really help you out because your algebra skills are essential not only for this course but in the grade 11 math course and for those of you taking grade 12 it's really going to help you out. So I can't really simplify this equation here on the left uh, so I'm going to go right into getting rid of the fraction. And to get rid of the fraction I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator that I want to eliminate because that's going to cancel it out. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. So multiply by 3 here, multiply by 3 here. That's going to give me 3y is equal to 3 times the whole side here, x plus 4. And what's going to happen? I'm going to take uh, my number here. And remember our rules for simplifying, we can actually multiply 3 into both terms within the fraction. So I'm going to do that right away because we always like to simplify whenever possible. Uh, 3 times this fraction. 3 times negative 2 thirds, what's going to happen is this 3 is actually just going to cancel out. If I were to do it uh, and show you what's happening, we go 3 times 2, that would be 6 over 3, and 6 over 3 is negative 2. So I'm going to end up with negative 2x plus 3 times 4 is 12. And my final step is to move all of these terms to the left side. So. Once I've simplified, once I've gotten rid of all the fractions, now I can move all terms to the left, or to the left side of the equation. Let's start with the negative 2x. I'll add 2x to both sides. That's going to cancel that out. I'll end up with 2x plus 3y is equal to positive 12. Then I subtract negative 12 from both sides, and I end up with 2x plus 3y minus 12 is equal to 0 because when these cancel out 12 minus 12 is 0 so I have to write that on the right side. Uh, and there it is. That's in the form ax plus by minus c is equal to 0. Now we don't have to do it in this equation but there is a fourth step. Uh, the fourth step is to check the signs. Reason being is that this a, this value right in front of the x can never be negative. And in some cases, when you manipulate the equation, it will end up being negative. In that case, you need to multiply both sides by negative one to flip all the signs. Good, so let's move on to our slope point form here. Uh, same rules apply. The first thing I'm gonna try to do is simplify, and I can simplify. I can multiply this 3 fifths into x and into two. So we'll do that right away. So we have y minus one is equal to 3 fifths x plus uh, 3 fifths times 2 is going to give me 6 fifths. And now that I've simplified, I can get rid of the fraction. And remember to get rid of the fraction, we're going to multiply both sides by the denominator that we're trying to get rid of. So in this case, we're going to multiply both sides by 5. And we'll get 5 times y minus 1 is equal to... 5 times 3 fifths x plus 6 fifths, like that. Now we can simplify again, so I'm going to multiply 5 into every term in the bracket, so that's going to give me 5y minus 5 is equal to, and here are the same thing, but what's going to happen here when I multiply 5 into both terms, all that's really happening is I'm getting rid of these denominators, because 5 divided by 5 is 1. So I end up with 3x plus 6. So, now I just have to move my terms. So I'm going to move all the terms to the left. And I'll start with the 3x. So I'll subtract 3x from both sides. I end up with negative 3x plus 5y minus 5 is equal to 6, because this canceled out right here. And you can see already that I'm going to end up with a negative 3, which we don't want. But we'll deal with that at the end. Uh, my final step to get 0 on this side is to subtract both sides by 6. And I end up with negative 3x plus 5y minus 5 minus 6 is equal to 0. And of course, I can simplify negative 5 minus 6. That will give me... That's going to be negative 5 minus 6 is negative 11 is equal to 0. And I'm not quite done yet because there is a problem with this equation. Well, it is in a form of ax plus... Uh, by. Oh, I dropped my y actually there too. Well, it looks like it's in the right form. There is a problem because our a here can never be a negative number. It has to be a whole number. So all we're going to do is multiply both sides by negative 1. 
And that's not going to change much, but it's going to flip all these signs and putting the equation in the proper form. So negative 1 times negative 3x is going to give us positive 3x. This positive 5y is going to turn into negative 5y. And this negative 11 is going to turn into positive 11. And of course, 0 times anything, it's still 0. So that's it. In the general form, ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. So do the same thing. Try it on your own. Pause the video here, and when you come back, I'll go through the answer. I'm not going to go through these ones, but check your answers, and then we'll move on to the next slide. Okay. Oh, yeah. So here it's asking us to graph a line. So graphing a line in general form. So determine the x and y intercepts of the line whose equation is 3x plus 2y minus 18 is equal to 0. So we've done this before, but just using other equations, we're actually going to find two points. We're going to find the x and the y intercepts. So the x intercept is going to be the point at which it hits the x axis, and that's the coordinate uh, x0. So that's when y is 0, we want to know what the x is, and then we're going to find the y intercept. And that's going to be the coordinate 0, y, because that's the point where it hits this y intercept here. Wait, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this equation and we're going to find the x-intercept by substituting y for 0. So 3x plus 2y minus 18 is equal to 0. Uh, and here I'm going to sub the y for 0. And that's going to get rid of this because 0 times 2 is 0. And we end up with 3x minus 18 is equal to 0. And to find out what the x is, we need to isolate it. So I'm going to start by subtract or adding 18 to both sides. And I'm going to get 3x is equal to positive 18. And finally, we divide both sides by 3 to get x all by itself. And I end up with x is equal to 6. So there's our first point. Our first coordinate is 6, 0. And I'll put that one on the graph right now. So when x is 6, y is 0, that's right there. And now I just need one more coordinate. I'm just going to erase this to make room. And we'll do the same thing, but this time we're going to isolate y and substitute x for 0. So uh, 3, so we're finding the y-intercept, so x needs to be 0. I'm going to put in a 0 there, plus 2y minus 18 is equal to 0. Uh, this is going to go away because 0 times 3 is 0. I end up with 2y minus 18 is equal to 0. And now I need to isolate y. So I add 18 to both sides. And I get 2y is equal to 18. And finally, I divide both sides by 2 to get y all by itself. And I get y is equal to 9. So there's our second point. Our second point is going to be 0, 9. And I'll graph that one right now. Here we go. And then I can just draw a line. Just like that. And don't forget your arrows. And it's always good practice to label your graph, so I'm going to label this line with the equation. And the equation was 3x plus 2y minus 18 is equal to 0. Try this on your own, and when you come back, I'll give you the answer. Oh yeah, there you are. There wasn't a whole lot of room to, to label this particular line, so I just put the, the equation on the top of the graph here.